IPOB one family. Be our friends all over the world. If we want safety and security for our people, then let's continue to support Eastern Security Network. All donations are welcome. No contribution is too small or too large. Do your part, knowing that freedom is in our hands and together we must all rise to the occasion. Go to our website to make your contribution, www.ipobinusa.org slash donate. And remember that freedom is not free, but together we restore it, farm by farm, forest by forest, house by house, and street by street. With us therefore without any further hesitation we must proceed to offer every prayer to chuku okike abiyama who said it in heaven therefore as we always commence not from today but from of old our father who art in heaven nanyin kebine liwe that your name may be hallowed by men that we may bow at the mention of it, that we may offer every glory unto thee, that we may offer you every adoration and adulation, because there is none like thee. You fight our battles for us every blessed day. You demonstrate through your kindness and your everlasting mercy that you are our lord our god and our creator this evening we offer these your children unto thee all over this very planet that you created they are listening across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet we are the inhabit they are listening to your gospel this very evening this gospel of redemption a gospel of hope a gospel of restoration a gospel of renewal this very gospel of freedom this very gospel of emancipation as only you ordained that this very gospel must be preached that mankind may be set free from the eternal damnation of the creation of the British my goodness me I want to remain in the spirit because we must worship heaven we answer your name O Lord of hosts everything about us is designed to offer glory unto thee we have atoned for our sins last year this very year we have not only atoned for our sins we have sealed we have shed blood they have shed our blood we have let our sacrifice be made unto thee even on the 30th of august as we are being felled by the bullets of the enemy by the workers of iniquity and of darkness we remain very strong today to beckon upon thee to ask you for your mercy and for your grace to ensure that your kingdom is restored upon the face of the earth that you can bring your healing hand to bear upon the life of those of them that you created for one singular purpose and that purpose alone which is to worship you in truth and in every honesty is there any way that we have erred is there any way that our ancestors may have sinned we confess before a congregation of the whole of humanity to ask you all Lord of hosts, to have mercy on us. Become You must have mercy upon us. We have suffered enough. We have been subjugated enough. We have been tortured enough. We have been imprisoned enough. We did not do these people anything. Our only crime is to answer your name. Our only crime is to be born your children. Our only crime is to excel at everything that we place our hands into. Our only crime is to exhibit your glory and your blessing which manifestedly is upon our lives every blessed day that is why they want to kill us 
That is why the British want to join those of them who don't know you to destroy your creation and your inheritance. You will not allow shame to befall your name. You will not allow the enemies to triumph over the lives of your children because you created us to exist, to worship, to honor, and to praise you. That is exactly what we are going to do when this Biafra comes. It will come in truth and in every honesty because we remain every blessed day. Chukwa Biama Biniwe whiter than white and whiter than snow. Is there any way that we have sinned that you cannot forgive us our trespasses? to enable us to fulfill your own word which was spoken thousands of years ago that instead of what you promised not to come to pass that heaven and earth will cease to exist you opened your mouth to bless mankind to the coming of Yahweh Heshua, who came here and said let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven those words can never be in vain because they are anchored upon your holiness and your magnificence. That is why in the end we know that Biafra will come, that these children that we have given birth to all over the world and their children and their children and their children as long as they give birth to them and they are Biafrans, they will worship you in truth and honesty. Through this very work we are doing, mankind will come to understand you. Let your miracle be wrought in our lives. Let us witness and behold your magnificence, your holiness, your mystery, and your grace. Under our command, O oh Lord of hosts, we call upon you. We call upon you to heal. We call upon you to provide succor to those of them who are inconsolable. We ask you to come and strengthen those who are weak. We ask you to restore hope where there is hopelessness. We ask you for inclusion where there is destitution. We ask you for one brotherhood, one camaraderie, one bone, one blood, and one flesh of your children. The Ephix and the Bibios, the Ison, the Shekiri, the Isobos, and also those of them from Isok. We are traveling all the way to the lands of Igala. We are moving on from there to Idoma, to Igede, to the territories of the Igbo land. All these places we dedicate unto thee. All these lands of yours, we ask you to cover it with your mercy. Because Biafra will come and when it does, we will dance on the streets i'm telling you by the time that we are done humanity will think that we are mad we are drunk in your glory and rightfully so because your kingdom will come to rest upon this very earth that very kingdom is the unadulterated non-negotiable sovereignty of the republic of biafra that your will may be fulfilled in our time all these we pray all these we ask for in no other name apart from that name that belongs to you i had in so sine big a big one a he said he said he i'm asking a very pertinent question is nigeria working for you Major General Muhammadu Buhari retired, knew the solutions to Boko Haram till he finally became president. He asked ex-president Jonathan to resign because of insecurity. He cried empathetically. He promised to end Boko Haram in three months. But now, he's telling us he's done his best to arm the military. Why isn't he resigning? Governor Fashola knew the solutions to providing stable power supply till he became minister of power and darkness pervaded the land. After trying hard and giving excuses like he only plays a supervisory role, the minute was assigned to someone else. Power grid still did collapse. The answers protests were tagged insurrection. In fact, Someone said Aisha Yusufu ought to be in jail for instigating violence. Then farmers were beheaded in Bonu. 
same person asked Aisha Yesufu to lead a protest. Aren't these people supposed to forbid hypocrisy? Is Nigeria working for any Nigerian today? From leaders hoarding food for the poor, receiving kickbacks from government contracts, to farmers needing permission to go to their farms. Is Nigeria working for you? Why is Zamfara's gold for Zamfara and Niger Delta oil for Nigeria? Why is Isba destroying alcohol? But their state governments receive federal allocation from monies received via taxation, including tax on alcoholic beverages. Why are some federal roads abandoned to bandits and kidnappers? Who is in charge of Nigeria's security? The president is talking to us this time. Most times, he's as shocked by the rest of us, by the absence of good governors under him. Regardless of his campaign promises and the manifesto of his political party, Nigeria has rolled back in terms of development. From Naira continually losing its value to a recently launched locomotive trains breaking down in the middle of nowhere. Nigeria has to be working for some people though. The government can do no wrong. To this set of people, their money isn't being stolen, even if the money is being borrowed, leaving debts for their own children to pay in future. Even if the leaders don't use public institutions, from sending their children to Ivy League schools abroad to getting medical treatment abroad. Some people who have nothing and we need to donate money for their medical bills if they have a serious ailment continue to hail the obvious lack of good governance till Nigeria happens to them. Then they get a little pissed. May Nigeria never happen to you. Say amen. We deserve better than the political class who go home with millions monthly to represent people who can't even afford to feed themselves. I am Olajumo Kialaode James. Nigeria is not working for me. Is Nigeria working for you? Fellow Nigerian, in search of excellence for Africa, my mission remains to create awareness advance practical solutions and transform mindsets via case studies. Together, let's meet wife deliverance for our race, country, and continent. Please share this video. I am Dr. Israel Noyerem Davidson. Thank you. In 2001, US-led forces overthrew a Taliban-led Afghan government. Following the 9-11 attacks, led by the Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. For the next 20 years, the U.S. and allies enforced democratic ideals, built up Afghan security forces, and provided operational air cover. The Taliban continued to attack. Now, eventually, under President Trump, the U.S. promised to pull out if Taliban agreed to stop attacks and hosting terrorist groups. Today, the Taliban militants have declared Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and overrun most of the country at lightning speed with little or no resistance from the 300,000 U.S. trained and heavily equipped Afghan forces. U.S. general could not believe an army could crumble at that rate. I did not, nor did anyone else, see a collapse of an army that size in 11 days. There'll be many postmortems on this topic. But right now is not that time. It is believed the Afghan soldiers, though diehards, had unquenchable allegiance to jihadist ideologies practiced by Taliban. There were Afghan soldiers by day, Taliban at heart, and Taliban at night. A situation some suggest currently exists in Nigeria too. So Afghanistan was simply handed over to the mullahs to govern based on their shared jihadist ideological leaning. The South and Middle Belt of Nigeria should wake up with urgency. The Afghan situation is cooking fast in Nigeria today. Afghanistan is number one on global terrorist list. Nigeria is number three. Second. But there is one thing I want all of us to understand this very evening. 
we are facing a very formidable array of enemies both external and within and we are going to overcome each and every one of these obstacles that i can assure you that they may know that the god we worship is an invisible god not a god that was wrought by the hands of men for we do not worship idol and we can never ever worship idol is impossible this very family this ipob belongs to the most high and that is how it's going to be until Biafra comes and beyond to eternity. This evening, I want to place it on record that our enemies are intensifying their attack against us from every corner. I am not saying this as lamentation or complaint. I am only trying to prepare our people for what is to come. You are being prepared for what is to come. The time has come to separate the chaff from the wheat itself. Our march is very, very near. The enemies are crumbling, they are quaking, they are doing all they can to try to stop us. But they have failed very woefully. And they will continue to fail. But I want to tell you that we are getting attacks from everywhere from everywhere all over the world and very soon they will buy over some of you some of you they will buy some of you over the spirit of Obab, Yasika and Ifajuna are still in some of you when the time comes they will buy you over I am not doing this program tonight to ask all of you to be strong I am doing it to remind you not that if they succeed in buying you over, you're not going to stop what we're doing. You can't. Not in a trillion, you cannot. Not in a trillion years. But I need you to appreciate one very simple fact. That at the end of this very race, everybody will testify that indeed Chukwogikabiyama, the same God of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus, the same God of Ehiri in Aguleri, the same God of Umweri, the same God of Ora Eri, the same God of Owe Eri, the same God of Arochuku. Not if you know about the, the, the true God, one true God. You will know that indeed, not only is he omnipotent, that that same God is the owner of this very agitation. No human being can stop it. We have enemies, and we need to be very, very careful, both within and without very very careful the next two weeks will be very pivotal next two weeks will be very very important in the life or should i say in this very mission that we have embarked upon the devil will do everything and you are going to watch spectacularly how we are going to destroy and shame the enemy that at the end every glory and adoration will belong to god and not to man now let us go and tell you what is happening that some of you do not understand i want those of you who are hardcore those who we are chosen before you we are born there were some people who we are chosen before they we are born to agitate for biafra restoration this is a message for you those who we, from their mother's womb they were born to do this very work you must be very very strong because Biafra will open the eyes of black people all over the world. Because Biafra will mean that blacks from America, blacks from the Caribbean, from, from Southern America, they will all flood into Africa. It will be like the time that Yeshua was born. Biafra is like a light, a beacon. They will follow it. They will say, let us go and see what is happening there. That is what these new colonialists do not want. They don't want Biafra to come. I am telling our people so they understand the mountains. I didn't say what mountain. The mountains in front of us that we need to overcome. And for us to overcome it, we need to be very strong mentally. Mental strength. Just like when you're doing anything in life. And it appears as if you are being buffeted from everywhere. That is the time that you no longer rely on willpower or your muscles. You go to your brain to endure 
and to persevere and to keep going until you overcome. That is the stage we are in right now. To make sure that our brain is in gear. To confront everything the Janjaweed has to throw at us. We don't have money. Their budget is over $20 billion to fight us. They can bribe Facebook. They can buy them off. They can do anything they like. They can come to some of you and bribe you off. They can promise you what you've never had before. They can give you maybe a house in Dubai. They can promise you a vehicle. They can tell you, oh, we'll make you vice president. They can promise you anything to make sure that you're like them. But this very IPOB, this very hardcore is not going to move. And I will tell you why we can't move. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to this broadcast today. The State of the Nation Address. And you are listening and watching through the voice of Biafra 97.5 FM. You are watching and listening through the voice of Biafra all over Biafra land. You are watching through channel one of Enter Biafra, the Enter Biafra live streaming app, and on all Enter Biafra platform. My fellow Biafrans, today is yet another historic day as we pursue our future, as we pursue to safeguard the future of our children, as we continue to fight for a just cause, as we continue to make history, 
I want to thank the people of Biafra today for sitting at home, for total compliance, for the remembrance of the fallen heroes and the hearings of the Biafra people. This day again, many years ago, our people paid the ultimate price for us to be what we are today. We were almost annihilated by the world powers. Biafra people stood their ground and fight until it was declared no victor, no vanquish. I want to tell Biafra people today that I am just very proud to be a Biafran because for three good years, Biafra people stand their ground and fought against world powers led by the British. We fought with our locally made weapons. We manufactured bombs to make sure that we die standing on our feet instead of those dying today in Nigeria kneeling down. This is the state of the nation broadcast that I have come today to address Biafra people. In the absence of our leader, Mazin Namdekano, who was kidnapped by the same evil, the same terrorist and corrupt Nigeria government. I want to remind you all those who do not understand what Nigeria has done to your future. The more the beneficiaries of this colonial fraud called Nigeria make believe that all is well with Nigeria, the more they attract doom, odium to themselves and Nigeria as an entity. I want you to take a look at the just concluded the PDP primary election. The participants are all lamenting, especially those from the southern Nigeria. They are all lamenting. Today I come across the word from former Senate President in the name of Anyem Pius Anyem. An impious Anyem was quoted out of disappointment to have said, I am shocked that considering for voting PDP presidential candidate was not based on burning national issues. And how to solve them but still on the old is lamenting about Nigeria. After this lamentation, he remained a slave. I have also watched the former president, Duke Goodlaw Jonathan, lamenting about the electoral, the new electoral law that how the candidates are elected and he, the President Guru Jonathan described this law as a disaster. What they refuse to understand is that this law and what they see going on today is designed from the Abuja Declaration of 1989. My fellow Biafrans, my fellow Odudua Republic, 
my fellow middle belt and all indigenous nationalities in Nigeria. I have just come here not to address only Biafrans, but I want to address some of you who participated in killing our people during the Nigeria Biafra war. Please tell me what makes us one Nigeria if not for the colonial interest that the slave masters amalgamated Nigeria, they invented and amalgamated us, the Oduduwa, the Biafra, and the Arewa Muslim, and they forcefully joined us together and called us Nigeria. Apart from this, what similarity do we have? Do we have anything in common? The answer is no. Our culture are irreconcilable. Our religions and the mode of worship are poles apart. Our mentalities are so different and even our languages are absolutely strange to each other. So, why are you proud to be part of a country like that? Let me remind you that in 1947, Chief Obafemi Awolowo said, Nigeria is not a nation. These are the elders who fought for the independence of Nigeria today. There are no Nigerian in the same sense as there are English, Welsh, in the European Union, those confederated states of the European Union. The word Nigeria is a mere distinctive appellation to distinguish those who live within the boundaries of Nigeria and those who do not. Today, a lot of you are ignorantly fighting for Nigeria. And if you are asked, what is Nigeria? You can't even uh, define or explain what Nigeria is. I want to remind you that till date, nobody has got that audacity in Nigeria to say contrary to what Obafemi Awolo will have said. In 1948, Malama Buba Katafawa Balewa since 1948 has been trying to make Nigeria into one country since 1914. But the Nigeria people themselves are historically different in their background, in their religious belief, in their customs, for themselves, any sign of to unite. This was coming from Malama Baba Balewa in 1948. I want you to look at, to look back to 1948 and today in 2022 to disintegrate Nigeria. And on daily basis, this situation gets worse. We are compelled to rise up to fight for our right. Nigeria unity is only a British intention for the country. This particular testimony of that particular evil entity if a first prime minister of Nigeria 
can say that Nigeria is only a British intention. Not you. It was never your intention to be a one to be one country. It was the British intention. Today, this particular position have not changed. We see the governors, including those who have just been elected, running to British embassy to meet Katria Lang, to advise them how they are going to kill Biafrans in Anambra State. Today, we have seen those who said they want to contest the president of Nigeria, they want to become the president of Nigeria. They left every African country they run to the United Kingdom. They want to consult the British people. Peter B did it. He left all the African countries. No that plane flew on to meet with the people that are ruling Nigeria by proxy. This happened in 1948. It has not changed. If the same people continue to control your future for the are going to have a better Nigeria. The only thing you have done so far is to shed blood of innocent Biafrans to keep Nigeria one. And this generation will end it. Today we remember the falling heroes. Millions of Biafrans were slaughtered and killed by Nigeria government through starvation, not by bomb. Starvation, the systematic or the weapon that is being used for genocide. The same people go to British today, to the United Kingdom. We are just incompatible. There is no love, there is no tolerance, and no similarity by all ramification. In the northern Nigeria, you are being killed as a Christian. When you talk against their religion, they call it blasphemy. You get killed. How do you reconcile that? One of the creators of particular Nigeria, fraudulent Nigeria, Sir Peter Smithers, who was a cabinet minister during the colonial regime, admitted the wickedness of the British colonists when he said in 1998, the creation of Nigeria involved forcing the group into our political structure. We witness it today. Everybody is shouting. They say the northern Nigeria the PDP must come and uh, give your give the Igbo man the chance to rule Nigeria. In retrospect of over 100 years, it is now very clear that this was a grave mistake which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so. The question lost lives of people and have life of Biafrans. We are going to end it in 2023. Yes, of Biafra people and their properties than any other tribe and any other nation in this evil city called Nigeria. The, the evil speaking part of Biafra made scapegoat each time.
at any crisis in the north. Call it politics. And we are going to refresh because we are getting some a lot of uh, uh, calls that we should refresh. So we are refreshing. We're sorry about that. I hope the voice is coming up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that particular interruption. And like I was saying, the Igbo speaking Biafrans have always been the scapegoat at any crisis in the North. Call it politics. Religious, they have always been provocatively at the center of massacre. And our properties are looted and destroyed without anybody to held responsible for it. In Kano, just a few weeks ago, we witnessed yet another looting destruction and burning of Biafran's businesses and properties in the north. Yet, nobody as we have always the biggest price of one Nigeria. And that is why we are ending it in 2023. We don't care how you are going to militarize Biafra land going forward. We will fight you with brain. We have not forgotten what led to the Nigeria Biafra civil war and how Chief Odume Wojuku, the Guru, and the man who saw tomorrow. He tried to save the future of his people, the Biafra people, from the agony that awaited us. This particular evil entity called Nigeria. The same betrayal that Mazina is facing today. The same betrayer every other genuine Biafra is facing today. The same betrayer Simon Akba is facing today. Because some of the Noah Nigerianists who pretend to be fighting for Biafra, they join the Biafra movement and at any given opportunity, they fight those fighting for Biafra. At any given opportunity, they blackmail those fighting for Biafra. Why they continue to pretend they are in the movement? Even Mazinam Dikano has out and the crowd the same particular issue, the same vision bringing us to today, Nigeria. Today, he is being detained, incarcerated in the SS dungeon for fighting for freedom, for fighting so that our children can go to school, for fighting so that our women can go to hospital and give birth, for fighting so that there will be good road, for fighting so that there will be education, for fighting so that there will be social amenity, for fighting so that there will be security. To him, he was betrayed and he was kidnapped from Kenya. Today, we are fighting to bring him out from the dungeon of the DSS. Let me also remind you 
that we have also equally not forgotten how the Biafra women died in pains. with cutlasses, and their children has been brought out cruelly during the war. The evil of Nigeria. Nigeria have never apologized and have not culturally done any kind of appeasement to appease the gods of the land for the blood they shed. It is equally painful to remember the death of our children as a result of malnutrition, as a result of hunger, starvation, deliberately done by the British using Nigeria government. We have also not forgotten at the end of the civil war, it was declared no victor, no vanquish by the then General Yakub Gowon. Today, Yakub Gowon is alive and he is paying the price of what he did to Biafra people. His people, his village, where he come from, has been ravaged by the same Fulani who he fought alongside with. Today, Gowon is a dead man walking because he is not even sure that he's going to live the next minute. Gowon whom can be attacked and nobody will protect him. That is how bad Nigeria has become. But what followed our declaration was a systematic disenfranchisement of Biafra people. We were given 2020 pounds. They're going to kill us and starve us to death. I want to remind you, one Nigerian is today, those supporting people will be thinking you have something to offer. That the first ceremonial president of Nigeria in the name of Owole of Furniture, Dr. Namdi Aziki said in 1964, and I quote, I have one advice to give to our politicians. If they have decided to destroy our national unity, then summon a round table to decide how national asset should be divided before they seal their unborn and the doom by satisfying their lust for office. For those of you supporting P2B, thinking P2B is genuinely fighting for wanting to be president. This was coming from Aziki Iwe. And do you know that? He continued and he said, I made this suggestion because it is better for us and many of our admirers all over the world that we should disintegrate in peace. When Azikiwe was making this particular statement, there were no Boko Haram. When Azikiwe was making this suggestion, there were no Hess men. When Azikiwe was making this suggestion, you are not providing security for yourself. When Azikiwe was making this suggestion, there were nothing like Amoteko. There were nothing like you see your so called Ebubago. When this Azikiwe was making this suggestion, Nigeria has not witnessed what you are seeing today. If we cannot be in peace, today you are blindly supporting P2B. P2B who cannot win a word in, uh, in, the, in Kano. He continued that should the politician fail to heed to this one then he will venture the prediction 
that the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo will be a child play if ever it comes to our turn to play such a tragic role. years ago. We need to refresh again. Sorry about the about the uh, about the network attack we are getting. So like I said, as Iggy was said should the politician fail to hit to this warning, then that he will venture the prediction that the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo will be a child play if it comes to our turn to play such a tragic role. Today, we are already in that tragic role. Because when he made this comment, there were no Fulani Hesmen, there were no Boko Haram, there were no Iswap, there were no Bandit, there were no all these villages and Bonnie. Again, we are experiencing a very serious attack. So we are going to change uh, we are going to change our one moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I believe we are back now and uh, it is going to be uh, better now. So we've changed, we've switched over to a different uh, network. Like I was saying, as Ikiwe continued and he said, should the politician fail to hit to the warning, then that he will venture the prediction that the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo will be a child play if ever it comes to our turn to play such a tragic role. And I will tell you that today we have already come to play such tragic role because the Boko Harams are everywhere, the Iswap are everywhere, the bandits are everywhere, when Azikiwa was making such comment, we don't have the situation we have today in Nigeria. There were no, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the running over Nigeria and turning Nigeria into Islamic State it were not like well redefined. Today, it is very clear. During the time Azikiwa made this particular statement, there were nothing like Abuja Declaration of 1989. Today, the tragic role is here. And some of you are complaining because you do not know anything about Nigeria. You are ignorant of Nigeria. That is why you are supporting Pitobi and every other uh, Biafra person or Igbo man or anybody from the South as, as, uh, for that matter. This was a man that was well respected for his stand in one Nigeria. A true son of Biafra Igbo land and an emblem of Nigeria unity. But one Nigeria failed him, even in debt. In debt. In Nam Daziki, we debt. One Nigeria failed him. The Nigeria people seem to have been subdued to stoicism. Otherwise, the injustice in Nigeria is very stinky. That no free mind can stomach that. Today, some of you are behaving as people that are being remotely controlled. We will deliver you in 2023. We are going to deliver you. 
I want you to go to Ogoni land in River State. You will pity the people. Just a few days ago, about 30 people died trying to struggle for food in the church. They died. They were struggling to get food. No good school. No federal government present in rivers. No good water to drink. No hospital. No job. No future. Yet, Ogoni people are very rich in oil. You saw the video making round on social media where the man they called Governor Wike was going to Abuja with a campaign buses. The buses were lined up. Mercedes buses were lined up. Those buses are very expensive. But in his own state, in River State, in Port Harcourt, in Iguacha, 30 people died struggling to get food of less than $1. Yet, you are shamelessly fighting for one Nigeria. I am telling you, in 2023, you are going to be delivered. Look at the history of Kensaro Wiwa alongside nine other Ogoni indigenous. They were unjustly roped in a kangaroo court and cruelly hanged by the then federal government of Nigeria for crying out against injustice to their people. The same thing they have done to everybody that ever dared to speak up. Nigeria has not stopped killing especially those who dare to speak. Okadibo paid the price. Nigeria disappointed him even at death. Today, who remembers Okadibo again? He's gone. The legacy is only when people like us mention his name. Nigeria have disappointed him even at death. The situation is not different in other parts of Niger Delta. Most people from River and Bayasa State, those who are living by fishing and all that, the pollution have made it very difficult for them to feed. They no longer fish in those areas. Yet, the Fulani Caliphate abandoned them. When they give them peanut, everybody will be jumping around. If you go to those places, they are the most uneducated people in Nigeria. Yet, we have been shouting and asking them to rise up and join us. At every given opportunity, they want resource control. Yet, those who, have, who are privileged to control the resources, they are spending the money running and sponsoring political campaigns. Amechi did it. Wike is doing it. At every given opportunity to control these resources, they squandered it on Fulanese. Fulani controlled political party. When are you going to learn? Today, as we remember the fallen heroes of Biafra, they died and they will continue to be respected. Those who die for Nigeria, who remembers them today? Nobody remembers them. Nobody knows who died for Biafra in Nigeria, except those that their family are still, uh, you know, looting the Nigeria government. Some Igbo state, especially the Igbo speaking state, part of Biafra, the oil producing part of Biafra, uh, Igbo speaking part of Biafra in Nigeria, they were all excluded in the federal government oil, whatever NDDC, until they had to fight for their own inclusion. This is happening every day, my people. Yet, you are fighting and thinking P2B is going to win election the most absorbed thing ever. The most absorbed thing. Just recently, 
They excluded Southeast from the PDTF or whatever they call it, scholarship, citing insecurity in the Southeast. While the Northeast and the Northwest continue to have Boko Haram bombardment every day, but they did not exclude them. I want to, I want you, especially the Igbo speaking part of Biafra, that today in this evil entity called Nigeria, you have the worst road, the worst road. Who contributed to it? P2B. P2B has been a governor of Anambra State. After being a governor, he always coming to tell you how he is very good in economy, how he is good in that, how he is going to build Biafra, how he will build Igbo, and you believe all this bullshit. A man that could not even unite Anambra people. A man that Ojuku single-handedly give the mantle to unite the entire Southeast. He failed, jumping from political party to another just for the ambition. P2B influence of 100 billion capital investment could not fix road in Anambra State. Could not fix road. Enugu on express road. If we say he has fixed the road in Anambra, he should influence fixing other road in the southeast. These are political failures. Today, some of you are running around P2B because he's an Igbo man. And yet, you are shouting one Nigeria. If you believe in one Nigeria, why are you campaigning for P2B? One Nigeria should be everywhere. Campaign for people in the north. That is what makes you a very good one Nigeria. And why must you say that they must give you power. We know that they can never give you power. We know that becoming an Igbo president cannot change anything in Nigeria. Look at Jonathan. Jonathan has been the president. Was Jonathan able to build road in his community? The answer is no. But go to the north. Go to the north. They create more local government to themselves and legalize them without anybody raising eyebrow. They manipulated even the national census by counting cows, fowls, and their brothers and sisters from Niger Republic as Nigerians, just to maintain the population and the political suppression. Yet, you claim you are educated from the South. Look at how these people have restructured Nigeria. You go to National Assembly every day, you talk on national television, you want restructure, you want restructure. Why the caliphate have restructured Nigeria? And they continue to restructure it on a daily basis. The 12 states of the northern Nigeria are under Sharia law. They are killing Christians for blasphemy. And everyone is scared of them. As a result of this dishonesty, from census board, there are more in number in the National Assembly and House of Representatives, respectively. Because of this power and the abnormalities, they have Sharia law in the 12th state of Northern Nigeria. Tell me, how can you pass a successful bill? If that bill is meant to correct the injustice which they see as normal and birthright, you are fighting for one Nigeria because you are ignorant of Nigeria. They hide under shadow of religion to cause us pains and because they derive joy from our sorrow, that is why they always kill us at every little provocation. In declaring cruel injustice, this misguided chorus of one Nigeria cannot stand. Therefore, therefore, in 2023, 
the general election will not be allowed in Biafra land until referendum is conducted. Boko Haram are being recruited into Nigeria military, contradicting their treatment against IPOP, the indigenous people of Biafra, contradicting against their treatment against Masob and the other Biafra agitators. We have remained non-violent group. We have remained peaceful and it will continue to be peaceful because we have come to adopt a peaceful civil disobedient called sit at home. One of the strategic and exercise we are going to use to dismantle Nigeria. Our members are brutalized, killed, and imprisoned. The example of it is Mazen Amdikano. They spent millions, millions to kidnap him for just exercising his right, civil right, through peaceful demonstration and broadcast. And there is nothing wrong with such callousness by the Fulani Caliphate. They went ahead, collaborated with those idiots in our land who call themselves the elite, people like P2B and Co. They collaborated with Umahe and all of them to proscribe IPOB. Why Fulanese and terrorists are moving with AK-47? They proscribe IPOB. You continue to be slave. None of you spoke out. Actually, you participated in proscribing IPOB. Today, you see the people that you were working with, they have invented Biafra land and you are running up and down, looking for our people to kill, thinking that it is IPOB. When you were romancing with this Fulani Caliphate, planning to proscribe IPOB, you did not know what you are bringing upon yourself. Today, they know you are not in good terms with them, and they know that the youth are not supporting you, and they have brought war to you. You can't defend yourself. You can't even condemn the killing in the Southeast. All you do is run from pillar to pole. They jail our people without court sentence. They keep them in prison without investigation. They arrest them without arrest warrant. This jailing and killing of armless and defenseless IPOB members and Mossob and other Biafra agitators is an annual event. It will no longer be tolerated. The harassment and arrest of our members will continue as they continue to do it at will by the so-called the federal government of Nigeria. This can no longer be tolerated by us. Therefore, we, the unrecognized voices of the IPOB autopilot, as they call us, all over the world, demand with immediate effect the unconditional release of Mazi Namdi Okukano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and every other IPOB members that is being incarcerated anywhere in Nigeria, and every other Biafra agitators, be it Mossop member, be it BGN, be it whichever group you belong to, anybody that is being incarcerated anywhere in Nigeria, we hereby demand the immediate release of such person. Do not forget that no matter how long it takes a stammerer, he must surely pronounce his name. We are waiting for maturity to eat a bedded fruit, as Chinua Achebe will put it in his own word. Today, Buhari and the Fulani Caliphate their government and their agenda is playing out very well. 
we hereby declare no election, no 2023 general election in Biafra land. This no election in Biafra land has been activated. We are going to make it a task that must be done by every Biafran. All measures will be put in place to make sure the adequate civil disobedience is implemented to stop the election in Biafra land for the very first time in the history. My Biafra people, together we will liberate our people from the shackle of bondage of Fulani slave chain. In 2023, we will make history. We are going to stand shoulder to, to shoulder. We are going to stand shoulder by shoulder. We are going to stand with each other, irrespective of the black male. We will stand against this election. And believe me, it will be the beginning of the end. We understand that different ethnic nationalities have filed several petitions and the joint suit for the referendum for Nigeria and the ethnic nationality to decide whether they want to be part of Nigeria or not. As long as this particular process is ongoing, the Biafra people, we are going to take the advantage. It does not matter whether we believe in the judiciary of this evil entity called Nigeria or not. We will take this advantage and we are going to wait until the day of their election is announced and we are going to follow and put our measure what we are going to do to make sure the election don't take place in Biafra land. On this note, we tell Biafra people, we are informing you this evening to begin to save for the days ahead. Those of you who come to, con co to convince you and deceive you about making sure you vote in 2023, tell them, in 2023, you are going to sacrifice your vote for Biafra to come. You have been voting since 1999. You have, it has not changed anything. You voted since 1999. I am not even talking since after the war, but I'm telling you since 1999, you have voted to date. What did you get? You get an empire sign so complaining about how they molested and humiliated them at the PDP primary. What did you get? You get P2B going to London to consult with the British just for primary election, only to come back to Nigeria and jump from one political party to another. What did you get? You get Abaribe complaining about ordinary election in his own state, Abia state. Nigeria have destroyed everything. So you have been voting since 1999. I am not even going to other democratic process that have been truncated by the Fulani nomadic criminals. I am talking about from 1999. You have voted. What did you get? Killing. Invasion. Even in a democracy, they use military to invent villages. It did not stand from Buhari. Obasanjo killed all the people for, to, to, to satisfy Fulanis. So I want you to go out there today on this particular historic May 30th broadcast. We are asking Biafrans, go out there and preach this message. Talk to people, tell them it is time to sacrifice your vote for Biafra to come. Believe me, this sacrifice is a task that must be done. On this note, I thank you all for being part of this broadcast. Biafra people, we are going to make history. When our forefathers were butchered and killed by this evil government, they thought that it is over. When Mazen Namdekano was captured in Kenya, they thought it was over. Today, we are going to tell them we will follow them very ruthlessly. 
until Biafra is achieved. May God bless you. May God bless Mazin Amdikano. May God bless the entire Biafra. May God bless Ududuwa. And may God bless all of you for supporting this movement.